Hello, my name is Safredi Salmon Mijege from Edukea, Tanzania. Welcome in this session in teaching history advanced level, specifically from five. So today we are going to start the first topic in form five, which is known as pre-colonial African society. It is just the first topic in form five. So the pre-colonial African societies here before touching anything, I would like to introduce that topic and uh, just a little explanation about that topic. It means pre-colonial African society. Here we are going to look on the the African or pre-colonial African societies before the coming of colonialism. So we are going to see the various activities which were being conducted in African societies before the coming of colonialism or colonialism in Africa. So we can start by looking on the basic concepts which are, are concerning with colonial, it means pre-colonial African societies. And these basic concepts include human labor, means of labor, objectives, objects of labor, relations of production and modes of production or mode of production. So we are going to see one concept after another. The first concept is human labor. What is human labor? Human labor is a purposeful activity directed at the production of necessary products. It means human labor is a purposive activity directed at the production of necessary products. It means that this is an activity, an activity which has been directed at the production of necessary products. It means the production of necessary products has been directed by the purposeful activity. Human labor includes personal factor in the production process, such as skills, experience, scientific and technological knowledge. It means that the human labor includes the personal factors in the production process. It means these are all factors of person that which are used in the production process, such as skills, experience of Pursuing that work, scientific and technological knowledge, it means skills, experience, scientific and the technological knowledge that are used in the production processes. And these are, these are known as personal factors which are used in the production. Labor is therefore the primary condition for human life because for man to survive, he must satisfy his wants or his needs. It means that labor is, is there for the primary condition for human to survive because every human needs the, the uh, human need, it means every human need to survive and the, in order to survive, must satisfy his needs or their basic needs which must be satisfied by the human or by any man. The second concept is means of labor. What is means of labor by the definition? Means of labor, these are things people use in production that is the tools of production. It means means of labor, these are tools or equipments which are used in the production process. These tools include machines, Oils and the more. It means the tools which are included in the production involve machines, oils, and the other tools or equipments. Production is aided by the instruments of labor. It means production to be taking place or to take place must be aided by the instruments of labor. These instruments of labor, these which I've mentioned are an example. Oils, machines, tractors, like and other instruments. The third concept is objects, objects of labor. Objects of labor. These are the these are things 
that are subjected to man's labor or they are things upon which man labor is applied applied and being the most is applied land being the most common objects mean these are the the place where the the man's labor is being applied it means that if the, if these are the factors whereby the human labor or man's labor has been or is being applied for example rain is being considered as the most common object or objects of labor it means the land is considered to be the common or most common object the concept number four it is relation of production relation of production is the process of production people it means is the is the process of production whereby people act on nature and at the same time enter into relation with one another it means that is a process is the process of production whereby people the is a process is a process of production whereby people act on nature and the same and the and same time enter into relation in order to produce so you can see that there is relationship between people or people become a relation in order to ensure there is production so that's we need we call relation of production the relations of production are determined by the form of ownership of the means of production and the distribution of products of labor it means that the relation of labor is determined by the means of production and the distribution of products of labor that is to say in the absence or existence of crisis and exploitation in the society mean the relation of production it exists it means the relation of production exists when there is there is presence of exploitation or absence of exploitation between man by man in the society so the relation of production you will see that there are crisis or exploitation between man by man within the society crisis you will find there is the class which is owning the the workers and there is the working class so these will involve two classes in the society so we are going to see uh, the concept which is the last concept known as mode of production this is the combination of productive forces and the relations of production to mean that the mode of production combines or is the mixture of productive forces and the relation of production the productive forces include human labor means of labor and objects of labor it means the productive forces include almost three things human labor means of labor and objects of labor it means human labor these are factors which are used in production like skills scientific and technological knowledge and uh, and others while means of labor these are these are the ways which are used or are applied in the in the what these are the the ways or these are the factors in on which production is taking place as i have taken example as land is a common or is the most common object sorry the, the means of labor these are the are the, the these are the the ways which man or person is used in production and the objects of labor these are the the place whereby sorry objects of labor this the the place or area where the production is taking place as i've taken example of rent as the most common objects of labor the modes of production are communal slavery and the feudal modes of production so we are going to see three pre-colonial modes of production which is communal or communalism slavery 
and the feudal modes or feudal modes of production. Modes of production in pre-colonial Africa. So we are going to see which are the which were the pre-colonial modes of production before the coming of colonialism or colonialists in Africa. The modes of production in pre-colonial Africa included the following modes of production. The first one was communal mode of production or communalism. Communalism. The second one was slave mode of production or slavery. And the third one was feudal mode of production or feudalism. So we are going to see one mode after another. By starting with communal mode of production or communalism, it means communalism or communal mode of production is the oldest system of social relations and the placid or the other modes of production. It means the communal modes of production, this was the only and earliest mode of production and it preceded the all modes of production. It was the first mode of production than the other. This was the first and oldest as well as earliest modes of production that was occurred before other and before any, any modes of production. It marked the rise of society from Shia animalism to human society. It means the, the occurrence or the emergence of communal mode production made or marked the rise of society from the Shia animalism to human society. It means before the, the rise of communal, communal mode for, of production, there was animalism. It means or Shia animalism whereby people were regarded as animals. So the, the emergence of communal modes of production turned or marked the, the lives of, those, of the society or human society. It means people turned from the animal to human and to make the human society. The main activities were hunting and gathering. It means the, the important activities which were taking place during the the communal modes of production was hunting and gathering. It means the human societies were involving or participating in hunting the wild animals in the forests and gathering the wild fruits for survival or for consuming within the society. Or by other definition, this is the earliest form mode of production in human history where evolution of society started. People were powerless before the environment and they depended on whatever nature gave them for food. It means that this was the earliest mode of production in human history. It means that communal mode of production, this was the earliest form of mode of production and in human history and where evolution of society was started and the people were powerless before the environment and depended on whatever that the nature gave them for food such as insects, roots and tools involved were stones and arrows to mean that the nature was giving the society for food such as insects, roots and the fruits to me that these were the, 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 the products which the nature was providing to the human society that existed during the communal modes of production. And the tools which were used to attain these, these foods were, were like stones and arrows, means stones were used for hunting. So in, as, as, as we are going or we are proceeding, we are going to see how stones were used in hunting because people were using stones to make the, the tools for hunting by using stones and arrows were used to hunt during the communal modes of production. Let us see the examples until now which are still practicing 
communal mode of production. The examples of of those societies there is Maasai of East Africa. Maasai in East Africa this is the best example of society which is still practicing communal mode of production. It means they depend or they mostly depend on hunting and the gathering. Another it is Frani of West Africa. It means this is another society which present in West Africa depending on hunting and gathering. The another is Koi Koi of South Africa. It means that Koi Koi from South Africa is another example of communal society. Another which I have not mentioned here it is it is Adzabe in Singida and and uh, Tindiga. There is Adzabe and Tindiga from Tanzania. So these are the societies which are still practicing communal modes of production until now. So after looking at the examples, let us see the salient features of communal mode of production. What were the features that characterized it in communal mode of production? The first one or the first characteristic was collective ownership. It means in the communal modes of production there was collective ownership of major means of production. It means that there was collective ownership of major means of production. For example, rain was owned by the world society. It led to absence of exploitation because means of production were not owned by few people. It means that the communal mode of production, the, the major means of production was owned communally or all member of the society or of the community. And that's why the, 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 the communal mode of production had no exploitation between man by man because the major means of production was, was not owned by few people. For example, the, the rent for the, the land was owned by the whole society or community. This was the first characteristics of communal modes of production. The second one was low level of production forces. It means that the level of production was low. It was characterized by low level of production forces because the tools were, were, more, were made were more out of stones. It means that the, there was there was low level of production forces because the tools which were used during the communal modes of production characterized by the, the, the use of or the use of stones in making those tools. So they were crude and they could not cultivate for a large, large, the large area or, or produce the, the, the quantity products because the tourists were brand and they were, were local. The third characteristics was absence of trading activities. It means during communal, communal mode of production there were no trading activities. Absence of surplus led to the absence of trade because whatever produced was consumed. It means that during the communal modes of production, there was no trading activity that were conducted because there were, all, there were no surplus which was produced and everything or whatever that was produced or was attained was consumed by the society and they had no surplus for the future use and that's why there was no trading activities. But the fourth one, the low level of production. This was due to the low level of tools of production. That means non surplus and the whatever produced was consumed. It means the level of production was low or was small in level because the tools which were used was poor and the the, 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 the the use of poor tools that led to the 
absence of surplus and the whatever produced was consumed or used by the community. And the fifth one or the last characteristics of communal mode of production was no exploitation between money by money in the community. To mean that during communal modes of production, there were no exploitation. There was no any exploitation because of collective ownership. As we know that during communal modes of production, that there was no exploitation because the major means of production was collectively owned by the world community. So there are no any private people who could own the major means of production that, that could lead to the exploitation of other people. So due to the presence of collective ownership, that's, that, that was there are no exploitation. So these were the characteristics of communal modes of production. Something you have to note and to be in your mind. This mode changed within time depending on discovery of iron tools which increased the production leading to surplus which transformed it to exploitative modes of production. It means that after after the occurrence of communal modes of production, there was changes that was occurred time to time. And the, the changes which was occurred was the discovery of iron tools or the discovery of manufacturing of iron tools, which was increasing the production. It means the iron tools which were discovered increased the production capacity and that led to the production of surplus. And the production of surplus led to the transformation to, to the coming of exploitative modes of production. And those exploitative modes of production in pre-colonial African society were only two. These were slave mode of production and and the feudalism or feudal mode of production. So you may guess the question that what was the characteristic of non-exploitative mode of production? Probably it will be communal mode of production. And if you got the question asking that what was the, the first exploitative mode of production is slavery or slave mode of production. This was the first exploitative mode of production. So let us go and see what about uh, slavery or slave mode of production. This is the first exploitative mode of production. It means slave mode of production was the first exploitative mode of production ever existed in Africa before the coming of colonialists. Here a person become an absolute property of another man. It means it mean that a person become the absolute property that could be owned by another man. Slaves dominated by slave masters. It means that the, we are going to see the crisis which have been experienced in slavery mode of production, whereby the two crises were existed. There were slaves and the slave masters. It means that slaves, these were people who were owned by slave masters. And the slave masters, these were the people who owned the slaves. It should be noted that many African societies transformed the directly from primitive communalism to feudalism. As a result, the slave mode of production was not well developed. It means that in African countries, or in African societies probably transformed from communal modes of production to feudalism because we regard slavery as was the mode of production that was occurred in, in Europe mostly. It means that in African societies transformed the dialect from primitive communalism to feudalism as the result slave mode was not well developed. So to some extent in Africa slavery was done but not at large extent as 
as primitive communalism and the slave and the feudalism or feudal mode of production. It was highly practiced in Egypt slave civility pilot. It means that the the, the slave mode of production was highly practiced in some countries in Africa, including Egypt, whereby the slave masters forced the slaves to build the pyramids in Egypt. Until now, in Egypt, there is pyramid which the marking there was the slaves were usually to build these pyramids. Let us see the features of slave mode of production slaves mode of production the first one was existence of two antagonistic crashes it means that the first characteristic of slave mode of production was the existence of two antagonistic crashes it means that there was two crashes which were in a fighting means there was slaves and the slave masters slaves were controlled and owned by slave masters and the slave masters were the people who were owning the slaves there was existence of two antagonistic classes that is slaves and the slave masters slaves were producers of their own materials requirements and the surplus products for their masters or slave masters it means that the slaves were used to produce the material requirements and the surplus for their masters known as slave masters so this we mean when we say the antagonistic crisis mean that the two crises slaves and the and the slave masters these were the antagonistic crisis the second feature or characteristic was private ownership it means that in the slave mode of production there was there was private ownership of major means of production there was private ownership of the major means of production whereby means of production are slaves and are owned by slave masters it means the major means of production was the slaves and those slaves were owned by the slave masters and they used those slaves to produce various requirements and the materials for the slave masters so that's why we term it as the private ownership the the few people slave masters were owning the slaves which were considered as the major means of production the third characteristics was existence of exploitation it means that there was existence of exploitation between money by man it was characterized by exploitation of money by man because slaves were the ones who were involved in the production and whatever they produced was appropriated by the slave masters it means that the slaves were exploited by the slave masters whereby slaves were produced and whatever they produced was the third, ex the third characteristics of slave mode of production was existence of exploitation between man by man whereby slave masters were exploiting slaves whereby slaves everything was produced was meant or was appropriated to the slave masters the fourth one was relatively advanced tools to me that slave mode of production used the advanced tools compared to the communal mode of production to me that the tools which was used was still low but some advanced than the under communal mode of production it means production relatively advanced leading to production of surplus and the last feature is relatively high level of political institutions it means that this is due to the use of better tools of production which increase the production leading to formation of states or kingdom it means during the slavery mode of production or slave mode of production there was the level of political institution that was formed because the production was increased due to the use of better tourists in the production and that led to the creation of surplus and the population was increased 
So that led to the formation of states or kingdoms. So these were the features of, of slave mode of production. But there is something important to note. The slave mode of production declined due to the conflicts between slaves and their slave masters. And due to that conflicts led to the collapse of slavery and gave the way for the rise of another mode of production which known as or which was called the feudal mode of production. So these were the short explanation about the slave mode of production. So I would like to give you the exercise which you have to perform. And the exercise comprise two questions. The first question is with examples explaining features of a communal mode of production and the second one is what is slavery and what were the its features. So these are the questions which you have to perform yourself. Until there, this is the end of our lesson. I would like to welcome you to proceed in the next session. Have a good time.